Hello and welcome to another tech review you didn't know you needed. Today I'll be looking at what you can do with a tiny 100 watt PD charger and a high-end gaming laptop. The focus will be on total system power draw so you will see how much watts is getting pulled in almost every shot. I'll be looking at several benchmarks both productivity and gaming and before and after across a variety of settings and power profiles. Stick around near the end for some surprising, well at least surprising to me, on how it all compares to running off of it the internal battery. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would greatly appreciate it if you would consider clicking on that subscribe button. So today we're going to be looking at the Nectech 100 watt power delivery USB-C power supply. First thing that's really striking about it is how incredibly small and lightweight it is. Um, so we're going to answer the question today of what exactly can you do with just 100 watts of power on a high-end gaming laptop like this Lenovo Legion 5 Pro. Uh, we'll be going through several different workloads. I'll be showing you how much power um, everything pulls at these workloads, what kind of temperatures we're getting out of like this power supply and comparing it to the original, and just answering the question, is this worth picking up? Can you live with just this power supply when you travel? So let's go over the size because that's probably what y'all are all wondering about and how big is this really? Well, here we go. Here's a standard anchor, you know, five port USB charger that you usually carry with you for travel, charge all your mobile electronics. And here it is compared to this USB-C power delivery charger. It is actually quite a bit smaller and about the same thickness. Now let's compare that to the original power supply. There's the, here's the 300 watt. Here's the slim 230 watt one that I also bought because I wanted two. And then let's compare that to the, the 100 watt. And here's the anchor for comparison. So as you can see, it is incredibly small, much lighter, much smaller. So it definitely wins in size and weight. We'll see if it's actually worth the trade-offs. First, we have the original 300 watt power supply. And with all the cables that you would need to bring with it, when you travel, you're looking at two pounds and six ounces and change, somewhere around there. Next, we're taking a look at the 230 watt slim power adapter, and it weighs one pound and 15 ounces, so almost two pounds. And last, and definitely least, is the Nectec, which is only nine ounces with the original six foot cable, which by the way, works very well. I tested it and it does charge excellent. Um, but I also bought an anchor braided one that's 10 feet long for a little bit more length. And that runs just over 10 ounces. So the first set of benchmarks you're gonna see, including temperature readings and uh, watt readings are gonna be at the highest performance uh, mode. So this would be your typical docked desktop type mode where you're using the original 300 watt power supply. We're in performance mode, a lap desk fan that's uh, blowing on it to help keep it even cooler. So I have all these things going on to just to give you an idea of what kind of power draw and what kind of temperature and heat gives off the original power supply while we're running several different benchmarks and loads. For this first test, we're going to get a baseline and see how much power is drawn pretty much at maximum load with the 300 watt power supply that's included with the Legion 5 Pro. So we're going to use Synbench R23. Uh, we'll do the multi-core and we will kick that off. And just with an all-core CPU load, looks like we are pulling about 112 watts. Running about 3.9 gigahertz across all cores. All right, so now next we will fire up a graphics benchmark. We'll run Super Position. It's one of the newer Unengine benchmarks. And we'll see how that um, loads the system when we have the GPU going to. Stick it on 1080p Extreme and kick it off. We're just pulling shy of 200 watts and I've pushed up to 250 if I run something like Point Royale at the same time with Synbench, which uses the RT cores and the uh, ray tracing a lot more. That will really kind of max out the system, but this gives you a pretty good idea of typical power draw, which is going to be roughly 200 watts. 
So of course we're not going to get that when we switch to the 100 watt um, USB-C charger. Next up, we're going to run the Puget System DaVinci Resolve uh, benchmark. So we're running 17.4, which is the latest version as of this shooting, uh, uh, DaVinci Resolve. And so we'll see how it runs on the stock 300 watt power supply, also in performance mode. Here we go. Running about four gigahertz across all eight cores, 16 threads, and pulling about 134 watts of power, which would definitely also exceed a USB-C charger. We've moved on to test five out of six. We can, let's see, we're still running around four gigahertz across all cores. And now we have broached 200 watts of power at this point. And we got a final overall score of 963. There are the final scores, 963 overall, 76 4K media, GPU effects, 76 Fusion score, 137. And now we're gonna test what it looks like, what kind of power draw it takes to build my work application, which is pretty beefy. We have a Quasar Vue.js front end, and then a microservices back end that runs inside Linux containers and WSL2. So we're gonna kick off the back end first and do a full rebuild of the solution. And we'll hop to the front end and also build the front at the same time and see what kind of power draw this is. So it looks like we're pulling 128 watts there. I saw it touch off at 128. It's bouncing around 80. So it can spike up there, but from a uh, typical, looks like workloads, this is uh, not too bad. It would probably stay within the power envelope of a USB charger. And here I am starting up the application. The back end and now the front end. Pulling 90 watts. That was about peak. It's selling in the 70s. Front end is started. The back end looks to be started too. And we're just hovering around 90 watts. So just on the verge of uh, what a USB-C power delivery charger can do. Seems to have settled down to, oh, it's down to like 50, 60 watts. So yeah, it seems like it would be fine for development. We will test that in a moment. So let's talk about typical usage for this 100 watt charger. You want to conserve power most of the time or try to bring your power limits under that 100 watts. So I would think normally you would want it to run it in hybrid mode so you could take advantage of the integrated GPU on the AMD side for lower power consumption and also drop your refresh rate of your monitor from 165 hertz down to 60 hertz. Both of those should drop your power usage quite a bit. So right now though, I am running in balance mode. By the way, you can't run in performance mode with only 100 watts. It's not even an option. You can't even turn that on. So at balance mode currently, at 165 hertz with hybrid mode off, so we're on the dedicated NVIDIA GPU, the RTX 3070. At idle, we are pulling roughly 32 watts of power. So let's switch um, to 60 hertz. And that brings our power usage down to 28 watts, it seems. So it did cut off uh, a few points there. And now let's go into the Lenovo Vantage software where we can switch hybrid mode on. So we'll turn it on here. And then it will require a reboot. So I'll see you in a moment. So one thing I do want to mention is that when the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro ships, it's in with hybrid mode off. So you only have the NVIDIA 
uh, graphics driver installed actually. So the first time you switch to hybrid mode and reboot, you won't actually have the AMD Radeon drivers properly installed and several things won't work quite right. Like you won't be able to adjust your brightness using the function F5X6 keys. So it just won't work properly. So you wanna make sure that's the first thing you do after you enable hybrid mode. And you'll notice in the device tree that you won't actually see the AMD Radeon graphics properly installed. Uh, I already have, but normally you wouldn't. So I'll leave the link in the description, but you can install it straight off of their uh, support site. They have the drivers right here. Or you could probably also automatically do it through the Vantage software. So you come over here to System Tools and come, on, come over here to System Update. And then just check for updates. And while you're in hybrid mode, it'll detect that new hardware. Basically, it looks like a second graphics card. It should find the drivers and let you update it that way too. But I went ahead and did it directly through the website. I find it amusing that when you reboot with the um, power delivery USB-C connected, it kind of gives you a little warning message that, hey, um, you're not going to have enough juice and you actually have to hit escape to continue. Now that hybrid mode is enabled, power has dropped even further down to around 20 watts at idle, which is pretty good and low. Let's go ahead and fire up uh, Vantage. You can see. We are indeed running in hybrid mode. Here you can see I drained the battery for a little bit and now it's charging back up um, to the 55, 60% range. And while it's charging, it is pulling 93 watts from the charger. So that's pretty much the max it can do. Now we're running Synbench R23 all cores. And looks like we are quite a bit throttled compared to when we had the full power supply. So. All cores are running only at 2.5 gigahertz compared to almost uh, 4, 3.9 before. And we're only pulling roughly 48 watts of power. So not great, but kind of what you expect when you have such limited power. Now let's go ahead and fire up superposition while the R23 benchmark is running and see what happens. So as you can see, it's actually performing quite well. I'm hitting here like 44 frames here right at the start. Frame rate's pretty good. Power draw is getting pretty high at 83 watts. So pretty extreme, but um, it, it's holding up better than expected. Let's take a look at the superposition benchmark. So this is all I'm running currently. And this is at 1080p normal. So when I, when I did the other tests under full load and using the original power supply, I was using extreme. So this would be more uh, relevant to this kind of power um, profile that we're trying to run against. Um, so it is using the RTX 3070 dedicated graphics here, obviously, because it's running uh, 30 frames or so per second, and it's pulling like 70 watts right now. So that's not too bad, actually. It's better than I expected for something like more of a gaming benchmark, which we will actually try some games later. We're going to run now the Puget. Is it Puget? Puget benchmark for DaVinci Resolve. Um, let's see how this goes. Wow, this is the highest uh, wattage pools I've seen. It peaked at 92 watts, 94, 90, 95. So if you're wondering if this little um, charger can actually pull 100 watts, yeah, it's getting really close in real world usage to pull that maximum wattage out of this little power adapter. Interesting, we're on test five out of six on test bench 4K, and it seems like it's boosting pretty high on the on the clock speeds of the CPU. It's hitting four gigahertz um, because I think this is probably more GPU and more single threaded. I'm seeing near 100% on the RTX 3070, and less of the cores are being utilized. 
So here are the final results. On the left, you will see it running under the 100 watt limit, and on the right, uh, all out. So you can see it's a significant drop in performance as far as uh, video editing goes with DaVinci Resolve. So under Windows Graphics Settings, I actually went and found the 3D Mark Launcher and forced it to use uh, NVIDIA Graphics just to be safe. Also in the drop-down, you can choose which uh, rendering device you want to pick. So you'll see actually the AMD and the NVIDIA RTX 3070. So the 3070 is definitely chosen. And you can see it is not running great at about 6.6, 6.7 frames per second, pulling 72 watts of power. Highly, highly throttled. Next, we will test uh, building my work development environment. Kick off the front end, kick off the back end. See what we're pulling. It's like only 55 watts. Pretty reasonable 50 watts or so. Part of that probably is because we're on balance mode versus performance. But uh, back in finished already, that's pretty quick. Still performing quite well. And the front end's done, both reasonable. Let's go ahead and start them. Consistent mid to low 50s on wattage. So let's take a look at some gaming performance. It's rather horrendous right now. I don't know if it's a problem with um, in the hybrid mode or because it's plugged into this 100 watt charger, but it's, it's really bad. So you can see the GPU clocks are really low and the frame rates are like 20, 21, pulling about 74 watts. It's This is Resident Evil 8 Village, and it's just not playable. You probably have to lower settings, but this was working great, you know, when I had it plugged into the 300 watt um, power supply and it ran really well. You can see in my other video, but here it's it's definitely not playable. Here we are back on Europa. I did verify that the uh, hybrid mode is off in Vantage and also verifying device manager. There is only the RTX 3070 displayed. Um, overall, frame rate seems a bit better. Oh, it's chugging again. Still not great more acceptable sure
looking around 45, 50 frames. Frame pacing is definitely uneven. I mean, when you're on the 300 watt power supply, it is just perfectly buttery smooth, you know, running at 120 frames at um, full native resolution on high settings. This, this is just night and day difference. It just does not perform all that well, you know, at a 100 watt cap. Granted, I still think this is a little bit better than um, hybrid mode, for sure. Seems a little bit more stable. Frames are a little bit higher. Yeah, you get these stutters every once in a while. Like it bottoms out to like 10 frames per second for a few seconds. There's Cyberpunk running with a lot of the settings turned on, RT on. So this is how I normally would run it with a full power supply, but um, it's running at 14 frames per second, pulling 89 watts, and so yeah, you would definitely want to drop settings to probably really low to see how it runs. Um, not not great. It's a very compromised gaming uh, experience. Here we are running with hybrid mode off, running at the 165 hertz uh, monitor refresh rate, and just watching YouTube at um, 1080p. And we're pulling somewhere around 50 to 80 watts. So depending, if you go to full screen, it's more like 80 watts. So it's not bad, definitely within the spec of, uh, of 100 watts, so you're fine there. So let's take a look at temperatures on the uh, power supply. So it seems to be running roughly 103 or so. For reference, the table is like 81, and the laptop trackpad is like 84, 85. Let's see the other side. And then here, it's a little hotter, 107, but still just barely warm to the touch. Let's take some temperature reading since I've uh, been running this uh, DaVinci Resolve benchmark for quite some time now. Overall, it's quite warm to the touch. I'd say almost kind of hot. But I still think it's within UL listed requirements, which is around 155 degrees. It's all kind of based on your ambient and the delta, but um, it's still within reason. It's, it, is, it is pretty warm though. You'll definitely feel it. Is not comfortable to hold in your hands for long periods of time. Let's put it that way. So here's something interesting that I noticed. So looking at Time Spy, this is how it normally runs when you have full power. So you get a pretty good score, 10.7k. 
This is here running at 100 watt uh, PD plugged in, 165 hertz hybrid off, and it's a pretty abysmal score of 1.1K. And then I unplugged it and just ran it on pure battery, and here it's running at 2.9K. So there's definitely some odd throttling going on or how the power is being delivered when you're on power delivery versus when you're just on battery. You actually get better performance while you're on battery, so just keep that in mind. So here's some additional thoughts comparing when you're running off the 300 watt power supply, 100 watt PD charger, or the internal battery. From what I notice is that once you're on 100 watt PD connected to the USB-C port, you're capped at 100 watts total system draw. It will not pull from the battery when it needs additional power. I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing, it's just something you need to keep in mind. Of course, it's going to hamper gaming for sure because your power hungry GPU is not going to be able to pull that additional power when it needs it. And when I've done additional testing off camera, I have noticed better gaming performance for sure. And plus the time spy score that you saw uh, shows that it just does flat out better on internal battery. But the drawback, of course, is it's just not going to last very long with such a power hungry laptop. So I don't think it's a bad thing. I just think it's something you need to consider and that you have that 100 watt power cap and that at least it's consistent, it's predictable, but it's just something you have to keep in mind. So final thoughts and conclusions. First of all, the neck tech actually works as advertised. It delivers ISOL up to 96 watts peak uh, pull from this thing and uh, it's very small, lightweight, reasonably priced. It's gone up a little bit since I bought it, so I think it's around $37. So I can highly recommend the product even though it does get hot. So you know, just be aware that if you're putting this thing under heavy load, it's going to probably get up to 140, 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, still within UL spec and is UL listed, so it should be safe, but it gets uncomfortable to ho hold once it gets that hot. Now, as far as should you use one, well, it kind of depends. I think it's great for travel. Um, great for general productivity, just web browsing is perfectly fine for that. You're well within the power envelope. Um, great for programming, so uh, just development work. I think it's going to be totally fine. You're not going to feel much uh, performance difference. Um, you will definitely feel it when you do video editing. So you're going to get probably about 40% of the performance you normally get. You'll probably feel it during the actual video editing and definitely when you're rendering out. Um, far as gaming, well, First of all, if you're in hybrid mode, it, it's kind of it's kind of pretty bad. So some games don't even work properly or will let you properly pick the right GPU. Um, so compatibility is kind of iffy. You're taking about a 10% performance hit on top of already the power starved, you know, RTX 3070. And just overall performance is, is just not great. Um, if you're going to do some light gaming, I'm sure it's fine, but any kind of AAA heavy graphic demanding game is probably just not even worth it in my opinion. So this is what I would do and this is what I did do and it worked out really well. You take the 100 watt uh, power charger and you throw that into your laptop bag. You travel with that charger wherever you go through the airport on the plane whatever so you always have that with you. Then you pack a 230 watt or the 300 watt power supply that came with it in your luggage. You sandwich it in your clothes, it'll be fine. And that way you're not carrying this huge heavy brick around with you when you don't really need to have it on you. But you'll have it once you get to your destination. There you could plug it in, have full power, do full gaming if you need to. So that I think is the best of both worlds. And so yes, I'd still recommend picking one up, but um, just realize its limitations and what you can do with it. Now, so it's definitely no you know M1 Pro or M1 Max. But, you know, if you run a hybrid 60 hertz, you can get pretty good battery life out of it. I did try it for quite a bit uh, on battery, and if you're just regular browsing, it's not bad at all. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got some useful information, learned a few things, and I'll catch you on the next one.